to, to do. Okay, all of you are going to be on tape now. Yeah. Uh, I, okay, let me introduce you. Uh, for that, I have to dig out a piece of paper where I have everything. There we go. So you still could see me if I make a gesture? Yeah, yeah. We can see you, but you may not be able to see anybody else for a while, right? Yes, uh, this you, is a stuff. You lost your ability to check us out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. All right, so let me introduce you. Uh, thank you, everybody, for showing up. This is our, actually, this is our first granular talk in statistical and nonlinear physics lecture series at SUNY Buffalo. We've been doing more statmec and nonlinear than granular lately. Now, our speaker today is none other than Professor Xiaoping Jia from Institute Laue Langeva uh, ESTCI, Paris. And the title of his talk is Acoustic Probing and Triggering of Shear Instability in Granular Media. So just a little bit about Xiaoping. I can say a lot about him, but I'll say a little bit now. Uh, Xiaoping Jia obtained his BSc in Physics from Nanjing University in China and MSc and PhD in Physical Acoustics from uh, University uh, Pierre and Marie Curie in, in France. Uh, he was appointed as an assistant professor at University uh, of Paris. Uh, he has worked in uh, Group de Physique de Solide from 1989 to 2002. Uh, in laser ultrasonics, guided waves, non-destructive evaluation, and granular media. Since 2003, he's a full professor uh, at uh, University of Paris East, uh, where he was the head of granular acoustics team from 2002 to 2012. He joined Institute uh, Rochefort uh, as a research member at ESPCI Paris uh, around mid-2012, which is when I vis last visited him. He has published uh, nearly 100 papers in scientific journals, including Nature, Physical Review Letters, Applied Physics Letters. His current research involves granular physics, multiple ultrasound scattering, nonlinear acoustics, friction, and adhesion. And, and Xiaoping is, a, is, a, is an extremely adept experimentalist. And it's not often that we are able to get experimentalists for this lecture series. So, uh, so a special thanks to, to Xiaoping for volunteering to, to, to show up, take his time on a weekend uh, and entertain. Yeah. It's all yours, my friend. So thank you very much, uh, Suraji, for this uh, kind uh, invitation. I want just to make sure, could you see my pointer? Yes. Okay. So yeah, so in this talk, uh, I will try to give an overview of our work on the sound in interaction with the granular materials, dry, wet, or saturated by the liquid. So it's a kind of a model system composed of the gas base and the sand particles. So here, not only we will utilize the, uh, the acoustic waves as a probe to monitor, to characterize the, uh, the materials, but also as a controlled pump to fluidize the medium and the triggering the shear instability. So to, uh, for illustration here, I will show you three recent experiments we have uh, realized on the ball sinking, for example, in a, a quicksands, and also the shear wave was softening by this uh, mechanical uh, vibration, and also the granular avalanche triggered by the ultrasounds. So this work has uh, many realized by uh, Sig Wildenberg and, uh, yeah, and uh, Javier uh, Brom, the uh, two previous uh, postdocs, uh, and my colleagues, uh, Professor uh, Arnaud Durin at uh, the Langevin in Institute of the ESPCI, and also uh, Julien Neobordes and the University Harry East Manavane. <laughs> So the granular medium uh, are only present on the nature, even on the other planets such as lunar and the March. And they are involved, unfortunately, frankly, in the catastrophe in the nature, such as uh, the landsliding. But the granular materials also widely utilized in the industry. It is the, uh, the second type of the materials 
used in the world, just after water. Uh, from a more fundamental viewpoint, granite medium belongs to a challenging system. Uh, are thermal, out of equilibrium, metastable and dissipative. And among the different states of the granite uh, uh, system, uh, determined, uh, uh, determined by the boundary condition and also the, the external driving, such as the shear, the vibration, we are more interested here about the solid states, solid uh, uh, jammed states, and also the transition uh, to the liquid flow state via the plastic deformation. So to this end, we will uh, perform the controlled acrostorheological experiments where um, the ultrasonic probing, not only as a, well, as a kind of a probe, it's a non-destructive probe, but we may also utilize it as a pumping, okay, to trigger uh, this kind of a transition. What is important, what I want to show here with the, the ultrasound, for example, we may trigger uh, this kind of uh, transition from solid to the liquid state, but without the visible macroscopic rearrangement uh, of the grams. Well, uh, the jamming transition or, or the unjamming transition or the jamming transition, uh, uh, this is something happening in many materials in the divided materials when the concentration of the particles becomes, uh, becomes important. Well, uh, different to the colloids, the emulsion and the films, uh, the, the friction between the, uh, the, the solid friction between, um, uh, between the granular materials uh, play a very important role, which result in a very homogeneous uh, contact network, as shown here, with the presence uh, of the force chains. And uh, uh, well, uh, play a very important role in the heterogeneous uh, dynamics of, uh, of the granular uh, system, such as stick step uh, like dynamics. Uh, indeed, uh, from a mechanical viewpoint, this kind of unjamming from the solid state to the liquid state transition is apparent to uh, the stick slip uh, uh, dynamics observed in many uh, systems. Uh, over a very large uh, scales from the boundary duplication to the earthquake and the passing by, for example, the glassy physics and the, the granular flow. Uh, well, compared to the photoelastic visualization of this heterogeneous contact network, for example, shown here in a 2D granular packing, the sound waves propagating from gram to gram provide a very unique probe of this network and also a pump, I will show you later, uh, which uh, are even applicable in a 3D granular system where the photoelastic method become impractical. So uh, as a function of the ratio of the, of the wavelengths uh, to the grand size, we we distinguish two types of waves. One, propagating palistically, uh, which is a low frequency waves here. And the, the other one, the high frequency corresponding to the short wave ones are scattered multiply uh, by this force trends. Uh, as a probe, we may utilize these coherent waves uh, to determine, for example, the elastic uh, modulus, but also the coordination number of the contact using, for example, a mean field theory by the acoustic sound velocity uh, measurements. And why these uh, multiple scatterways, which is extremely sensitive to the minus change at the level of the contact or uh, the, the internal uh, dissipation pro uh, provides us a very useful approach uh, to send the physics 
happening at the scale of the contact. Here, I show you an example by adding just a 0.01% of the liquid in volume, it will uh, increase the internal absorption of the ultrasound about by a factor of about five. So we can imagine to use the, to utilize the, the, the absorption by the multiple scattered ways to, to detect the presence of the liquid, why not on the moon or in the march? Yeah, so this is a kind of uh, application uh, we may uh, uh, we may uh, uh, utilize by this um, mar uh, multiple scatterways. Now, uh, I will show you how this uh, uh, acoustic waves or the in general mechanical vibration can fluidize the uh, system. This is the, the, uh, the main topic I will uh, describe in this talk. So the outline is divided by three parts. Uh, first of all, I will describe the ultrasonic tracking of a ball sinking in a vibrate, the dense granular suspension, just like as a quick sense. Okay, um, and I will discuss the unusual, the solid liquefaction in this dense uh, granular uh, sediments on the basis of the frictional rheology. And to better understand the such uh, uh, the soil liquefaction without uh, the macroscopic re re rearrangement of the particles, uh, we will try to investigate directly the nonlinear shear wave generated by this uh, vibration, and especially to monitor a kind of uh, shear modulus uh, uh, softening via a mechanism of the acoustic nubrication at the level of the contact. And finally, uh, I will describe uh, the triggering of the shear instability in the dry granular materials, such as uh, the interfacial sliding or the granular avalanche by the small amplitude ultrasound. Again, via a mechanism of uh, the acoustic lubrication without the visible rearra rearrangement of the particles. Well, uh, uh, before showing you the, the ball sinking in uh, the ball sinking in uh, in uh, vibration induced uh, fluidized the system in the granular system saturated by water, I would like to remind you uh, similar vibration induced the fluidizing fluidization in the dry granular uh, materials. So on the a vertical vibration, the acceleration uh, of the uh, the acceleration of the shaking should be larger than the gravity to fluidize, for example, the system here onto the top of the medium. While for the by a horizontal vibration, a less uh, uh, strong uh, 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 a less strong uh, vibration is enough to fluidize the system if the vibration overcome the Coulomb friction threshold. As shown here by this, exper uh, by this experiments. So the, the fluidized layer at the top of uh, this uh, system depend on the shear, I mean the, the shaking intensity and we do observe that by increasing the shaking intensity and the, the dis, uh, and, and the decreasing, we will find a kind of hysteretic uh, uh, behavior, just like in the frictional system. Uh, now, let me uh, show you what is happening when we uh, horizontally vibrate uh, a granular system saturated by the water. Okay. If you uh, trust me, if we try to uh, look at in this zone far from this ball, we will see that the 
on horizontal vibration, we are not induce the visible, the motion of the particles here. Of course, uh, please just say the things uh, in this corner. However, in the, in the dry granular system, the horizontal vibration do produce, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the, the rearrangement of the particles, just like uh, uh, we, uh, we show in the uh, previous uh, system, okay? Yes, uh, I'll try to remind you, this is what we show here the, the, in this uh, system. We do see some converted flow and the rearrangement of the particle is uh, precisely what is happening here. But in the saturated uh, uh, system, the, the characteristic time of the re 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 uh, rearrangement is uh, determined by the viscosity of the liquid. So it is different to the situation in a dry granular system where the characteristic time of the rearrangement is determined by the confined pressure. So compared to uh, the vibration frequency, in other words, uh, the period. So in some case, I mean, uh, in the saturated the granular uh, system here by the water, we don't see uh, uh, the rearrangement because uh, the rearrangement time is much longer than the period of the vibration. However, in the dry system, this rearranged, uh, rearrangement time is much smaller. Okay, Th that's why we do see these kind of things here. Well, uh, more precisely, let's uh, look at what is uh, uh, happening for a ball uh, sinking in a horizontal vibrate saturated granular system. So our dense granular suspension is uh, composed of the small gas space of about 0 0.1 millimeters, which settle down in the water to reach a dense pegging of about 62%. And uh, the steel ball, we utilize here is about a 10, a 10 millimeters. At the beginning, it is a seat stably at the surface of this jammed granular sediment because it is very dense. And this ball starts to sink inside the system as soon as the horizontal mechanical vibration is applied. And we can follow the motion of this steel ball inside this opaque granular suspension by a ultrasonic sauna because our system is saturated by the water and the ultrasound propagation is very good here. So here is the echo, for example, from this ball. So the trace, the position of this ball inside this opaque the system for example, is shown here uh, by the trace of the intact ultrasonic echoes. So as we show here, if we increase the shaking uh, density, the packing uh, the depths of the granular system increase considerably here. And of course, by a numerical differen differentiation, we can also uh, deduce the, uh, the sinking velocity as well as the acceleration as a function of the time or by a cross plotting as a function uh, of the depths. As uh, uh, we show here very quickly, uh, the ball sinking reach a stable regime, stationary regime, where the acceleration or more precisely the deceleration uh, becomes uh, negligible as we show here, okay? So in this study, we are more focused on this uh, regime uh, of the thinking from which we will try to fit the rheological parameters uh, 
uh, by using, for example, the frictional rheological law, uh, what we show here, what we call the, the mu of i, and also uh, this friction law we, uh, uh, we see here is very comparable to a kind of uh, Bingham plastic fluid with a threshold here in the granular system. Uh, this threshold arises from the static friction uh, uh, coefficient. So uh, from uh, using this friction law, we may uh, resolve the motion uh, of this ball, uh, especially in the regime, in the quasi-static regime. Uh, so uh, by fitting the solution, in other words, the position of this ball, uh, we saw uh, experimental data, okay, of this experiment, uh, experiment data I showed before. So we can deduce, uh, for example, the rheological par uh, parameters such as uh, uh, the static uh, coefficient of a friction, but also this uh, uh, effective viscosity. So uh, this is the rheological parameters we extracted by this fitting shown here as a function of the shaking intensity. So we observe here that uh, the uh, static coefficient of the friction as well as uh, the viscosity decrease uh, significantly when the shaking intensity increased here. So, uh, uh, yeah, so just to let you know, I will show you later that this decrease of the static coefficient of the friction could be understood from a kind of the softening uh, of the contact network. I will show you uh, later which is uh, consistent uh, with the friction, uh, the friction weakening uh, model uh, uh, developed uh, by the people from the frictional community. Uh, here, I want to, to stress that we do find some difference of the data here, which depend on the size of the probe of the ball. Uh, okay, if uh, the, uh, uh, the diameter of the ball changed, for example, from eight uh, millimeter to the 15 millimeters, we do find some change uh, uh, of the results. So this suggests likely uh, uh, a kind of non-local rheologic behaviors properly related to, to the existence of uh, the force trends, uh, which have a size comparable five or 10 times the grand size, which is comparable to this uh, uh, probe, uh, yes, to this uh, probe, uh, Tova probe, uh, which is uh, the steer ball here. Xiaoping, uh, I have a question. Yes, uh, please. What, what is Z star and T star in the equation for Z uh, that you have? Yeah. yeah. Z star is, uh, uh, is the beginning. Well, I will just come back. Uh, uh, Z star is the, is the depth from which the flow becomes uh, uh, steady. In okay. other words, uh, we, uh, the acceleration or the deceleration here becomes uh, negligible. It is clear? Yeah, I mean, thank you. Yeah. yeah it, it is the depth, uh, yeah, somewhere here from which uh, the sinking becomes stable. I mean, uh, yeah, a stable, you don't have any uh, further change of the velocity. In other words, the acceleration, the deceleration is negligible. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, please stop me if the thing is not clear. I'm sorry, if, uh, I'm sorry for my uh, broken English. <laughs> no, 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 you're doing absolutely fine. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm a little bit stressed about that. Yeah, uh, now if we have, a, uh, if we have a take a careful investigation of the comparison, 
I mean, uh, from uh, from uh, of a frictional uh, model. I mean, the motion, the theoretical prediction of the motion of the particle of, of the steerable. I'm sorry, and the experimental observation, we do observe a very important that the deviation. Of course, it works as I assume that in the stationary regime. Okay, the flow. Uh, this is precise that the regime we have. Uh, uh, investigate, but uh, it's uh, deviated very seriously before the stationary regime. Uh, where is the problem? I did not uh, emphasize too much in over uh, frictional fit models here at the beginning. Yeah, I'll probably I will try to come back. Uh, here we make a first approximation that the rheologic. Uh, Parameters mu zero, I mean the st static frictional coefficient, and uh, the effective uh, viscosity is uh, uniform as a function of the depth. Okay, so this uh, approximation uh, should not be uh, valid because uh, we can imagine that under the horizontal vi vibration, the solid fraction, solid volume of fraction of the particles should be different. It should be uh, more system, the, the pattern should be more loose at the top and, uh, and the dense in the depths. In other words, for example, the, the effective viscosity of the granular system uh, should increase with the depths. Okay, so that's why if we utilize an empirical relationship to describe this increase of the effective viscosity with the depth, okay? And we recalculate uh, the motion of this sinking ball. We do improve the comparison of the, uh, of the theoretical prediction with our experimental observation. Yeah, so, uh, Okay, uh, as a last part for, for this ball sinking. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, I want to compare more quantitatively uh, the ball sinking in a saturated dense granular system and uh, a dense dry granular uh, uh, system. So here we may uh, measure the sinking uh, just from the optic uh, uh, visualization of the disappearance uh, of the sinking ball. Okay, we can measure, for example, the, the visible dynamic, um, the diameters here, and they try to deduce, uh, uh, I mean, the the sinking depths from a, a, a function of the time. Definitely, we observed here that uh, the ball sinking takes a much more long time in the dry the granular system. Okay, it takes a much more long time to penetrate in the in a dry granular packing which implied from our previous uh, theoretical uh, model that the effective viscosity in the dry system is much higher than in the water saturated granular system. So if we follow the concept of uh, effective temperature proposed by Dana, also by Max and the in the Kuchan, which is a proportional to the acceleration. In that case, our experiments, our uh, two observation would suggest that, would support this uh, fluctuation dissipation uh, uh, relationship uh, in which, in other words, for a similar shaking density, in other terms, the similar effective temperature, the larger the random force is. In other words, the agitation of the particle agitation is, 
the larger the dissipation, in other words, the effective viscosity is. Do you remember, uh, I tell you that in the dry granular system on the horizontal vibration, we do observe the agitation, the rearrangement of the particles because of uh, uh, the carry the short characteristic time compared to the period of the motion. However, we do not observe the, the visible agitation or rearrangement of the particles because the carry pastry time of the rearrangement is much longer. So our experiment in some sense suggests that the vibrated granular system behave in some sense like a brownian, uh, just like a brownian like uh, uh, system. Okay. Well, uh, to better understand this unusual, what I call the unusual liquefaction, so uh, liquefaction and the vibration without the visible uh, rearrangement of the particles, particularly in the saturated granular system. Now let's investigate directly the nonlinear response of the shear wave, which is generated by this uh, mechanical vibration. Okay, especially I will show you, I try to monitor a kind of uh, this, uh, the shear modulus uh, uh, softening, okay, via what I call the uh, acoustic fully uh, 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 acoustic lubrication of the contacts. Okay, so to do so, I slightly modify the system. So it is still the same granular, dense granular su uh, suspension. So uh, instead of uh, to vibrate our system with a shaker, here I will shear, uh, I mean, the vibrate the granular system by a rough uh, plastic, I mean, the metallic plate here, which is uh, uh, vibrated ho horizontally here, I mean, vertically. And uh, we will see what is the generation of this uh, shear, uh, shear waves or the shear vibration propagating, for example, uh, along this medium. Okay, so to do so, I will utilize uh, ultra-fast ultrasonic scanner, okay, here, just uh, to measure the vibration generated by this, uh, 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 generated by this uh, rough uh, plat uh, metallic plate. So it's a kind of a, a PIV, but it's an ultrasonic PIV uh, compared to the PIV, it, uh, uh, works even with this uh, optical opaque uh, system and the, which is also can can detect the motion uh, I mean the vibration field even inside the system so here I will just show you the picture the vibration generated by this uh, uh, horizontal uh, mechanical vibration as you show here the frequency is uh, comparable uh, I'm sorry uh, I don't see where is the frequency now. Yeah, the, the, the frequency here is uh, completely comparable to the shaker, to the horizontal shaker we utilized before. Yeah, you have some question? No, it's okay. So here we, uh, we can follow uh, the propagation of the shear waves generated by this shear uh, uh, vibration and uh, deduce uh, the velocity of the propagation is uh, very small, it's about uh, very, uh, very small, it's about 30 meter per second. By a numerical calculation of this kind of, uh, of the medium, we can show that these uh, uh, waves corresponding to a kind of uh, surface like, I mean, the really like uh, the surface wave, whose velocity is very close to the shear wave, okay? This is we observed here. So we can measure, uh, thanks to this uh, ultrasonic PIV, the, the shear mechanics waves generated by this uh, horizontal uh, mechanical vibration. Well, let's see uh, what is happening if we, we increase uh, this uh, uh, 
horizontal, I mean the shear oscillation, we observed that the time of the flight of this generated shear waves increased uh, very importantly, which corresponds to a softening of the group velocity here is uh, just like, uh, because it's a pulse. So what we measured here is a group velocity. So we do observed a softening of this group shear with the velocity up to about 40%. So it's very important. But uh, it's uh, interesting uh, to, 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 uh, to stress that during this softening, we do not see any significant rearrangement of the particles as I mentioned before. So this softening uh, yeah, of the shear uh, velocity could be understood by a friction model I mentioned before, which is developed for the multiple contact of the interface by the group of Bonberger and Gaoli uh, uh, at the Sorbonne University in Paris, where they show that at uh, the multiple uh, contact interface, the sleeping at the level of uh, the, the contact of the asperity uh, and the uh, oscillated shear will lead to a softening of the interfacial shear stiffness here at the level of the contact. So now, if we generalize this idea to a granular system where we replace the contact, okay, of the asperity now by the contact between the grains, so we can also on the over shear with vibration, so we can also uh, expect a softening of the shear modulus without introduce the rearrangement, I mean the macroscopic the rearrangement of the of the particles. Okay, so uh, this result is uh, very important, which means that uh, the vibration uh, could induce the shear modulus of the softening and also consequently the ear stress uh, decrease as we observed in our previous uh, experiments in the ball sinking uh, on the external vibration. Uh, do you remember where we observed uh, a decrease uh, of uh, the static uh, uh, friction coefficient? So this is a kind of uh, un unjamming by the vibration, uh, uh, by the external vibration could take place without the opening, uh, in other words, the opening of the contact, in other words, without the packing density change. So this unjamming is a very important, uh, uh, it's a very, uh, uh, very important uh, behavior. So- can I, ask, can I interrupt for one second, just ask a quick question to the previous slide, sorry. But yeah, this please. is so interesting. Can you say a little bit more about the frequency dependence there at the lower left? Do, do you think that's, that's, um, that non-monotonicity is, is, is relevant? Yeah, it's a very good question. So here, uh, you, as you observed it, so it's a low, uh, it's a low frequency, it's a uh, mechanical frequency. I will show you later the, the softening with the, the, uh, the uh, the ultrasound, which is not a 100 hertz, it's a 100 kilohertz. So in these experiments here, uh, you do see some difference, uh, but we believe that this difference, this slight difference, it's a very good uh, the question. We don't understand it com uh, completely. We don't have a more detailed investigation here. We believe the difference of the frequency is a some, a something here is a related to uh, 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 to properly. I will show you the experiments here. Uh, properly, the attenuation of the shear waves, because you know this is a granular uh, uh, system saturated by the water. 
So uh, probably at this frequency, the shear wave will suffer a kind of attenuation, which is uh, not really, uh, not very well uh, um, measured here. I don't know if I'm clear. Heinrich, it's clear for you? Yeah, that's a good answer. I, I mean, I don't know the, <laughs> the reason. Yeah, either, so I, 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 I want to just to say, the, uh, for us, I will say this a slight difference of the frequency probably associated the attenuation, the, I mean, yeah, the, the, uh, the absorption of the shear waves. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I want to, to finish this part. Uh, to observe the, the softening, uh, I mean the softening of a shear, shear waves up to the regime uh, of the enjaming with the, the rearrangement of the particles. We can uh, do that at our highest shear oscillation. So I want just to let you know to investigate the rearrangement of the grains. In other words, the, uh, the plastic uh, granular flow we can compare uh, the, the ultrasonic speckle changes because we have this ultrasonic imaging here of our particles before and after the high amplitude shear wave passage. If there is a rearrangement of the particles, for example, uh, the, our ultrasound, I mean the ultrasound imaging uh, could detect that because the wavelengths of our the ultrasound is uh, uh, is uh, smaller than the size of our uh, glass bits. So go ahead. So per, uh, precisely, this is what we uh, observed here. I mean, before, during, and after shear wave propagation, we make the difference of 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 our ultrasonic speckle. Uh, patterns. Here is at the lowest oscillation. We don't see significant uh, change. I mean, the significant the, uh, rearrangement of uh, the, the grains, the change of the position. However, at our highest oscillation, we do observe the change of the position of the particles shown by this uh, uh, color, uh, colorful spots here. And uh, uh, in this uh, very high uh, oscillation, uh, we do observe the considerable the decrease of the sound velocity. Where do you remember the velocity uh, decrease from a 30 meter per second to about a seven meter per second, which uh, correspond to a softening about 55% and the corresponding to, if you like, if we calculate the softening of the shear models are very important. The shear models are more than uh, 85%. So we do observe, we do monitor the shear models softening up to the NGME transition in the sense that are combined by the plastic rearrangement of the particles. In other words, the flowing state. So, uh, I think we have shown here uh, the strong connection between the nonlinear shear elasticity uh, with the plastic uh, deformation in general for such kind of uh, a form of uh, the medium. So it is not a liquid here. In a, in a pure, uh, in a perfect liquid, people know that shear modulus is zero. But here we are not in a pure uh, uh, liquid. It's a amorphous system. Even the NGM transition take place. We still measure some shear modules. So yeah, uh, in the, the third and the last part of this talk, I will show you uh, very quickly the triggering of the shear inst instability uh, in the grand, in the dry granular system, and now by the small amplitude ultrasound, so the amplitude is even smaller than the mechanical vibration I uh, show you uh, before. Okay, and uh, in particular, I will show you some experiments 
of the granular uh, 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 granular avalanche. So all these stuffs, uh, we believe, uh, the triggering, for example, of the instability in a highly confined granular system because of time. I mean, machine here, which is a very similar. Uh, I mean, to have the implication to the the seismic fault slip. I'm mean, not talking here, but also to, for example, the granular avalanche, or just the simply the triggering of the starting of a glass interface. All this stuff we can attribute it to a kind of uh, the acoustic of uh, lubrication at the level of the contact, which I assure you in the uh, in the two previous part, uh, in which we cannot observe the significant rearrangement of the particles. This is the message. So I will show you some uh, experience here. Uh, I will start by uh, just the, the sliding of uh, uh, interface. Okay, just to remind you the first uh, computer experiments uh, as performed by uh, Bombay and the Gaudi groups in Paris. So uh, here uh, they uh, put a rough slider on an uh, inclined plane. Uh, below, of course, uh, uh, the, the angle of the sliding. In other words, below uh, the Coulomb uh, uh, threshold of the force. And after that, they applied a mechanic vibration. So you, you will have a, a, a dynamic vibration here. And you will find that when you increase, okay, when you increase this uh, uh, oscillatory uh, shear force close to the year stress of the Coulomb year stress, okay, you may. Uh, 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 you may induce at the beginning if uh, this uh, vibration, shear vibration is uh, far from this uh, uh, threshold of the cool threshold, you will create a kind of shear creep here. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, the, the creep motion here, but if uh, the external vibration, I mean, this. Uh, uh, oscillator vibration is high enough at the moment, you will trigger a self accelerated the sliding. It's just a, like a kind of uh, uh, avalanche. Okay, so this kind of uh, behavior pointed to a bifurcation between uh, what we call a jammed creep, because this kind of creep, I mean, the creep motion is saturated in, um, in the course of time, okay? Even you have the motion here, but it will be uh, uh, saturated, even stopped somewhere. But uh, you could have a bifurcation also to uh, uh, initial flow, self uh, inimited the, uh, the, the initial flow, okay? If you uh, beyond the threshold. So this kind of, uh, Bifurcation behavior is where uh, uh, protected or uh, consistent with the, the universal rate, uh, rate and the state. Uh, constitutive law developed for the friction, for the fault seismic friction. Uh, we have do some similar experiments at the University of uh, Manawe, but with this uh, mono uh, mono contact. So uh, the contact here is just uh, realized by the very smooth uh, glass, um, uh, the steel beads here, which is in contact with a, a thin nanometric film. So the interface is very well controlled. And uh, here we uh, applied the, the vibration thanks to a shear uh, quartz resonator at a very high frequency. As you can see here, is far megahertz. So this shear resonator we are used here as a probe to investigate this interfacial stiffness uh, evaluation, but we also uh, uh, utilize this uh, shear resonator 
to break the, con the contact as I will show you later. So first of all, I will, we will use this uh, shear resonator as a probe and uh, we increase this uh, uh, inclined plane. So we will uh, increase the inclined plane to the failure, in other words, to the, uh, uh, to the sliding. Uh, in between, we measure by this uh, shear resonator using a very small amplitude to monitor the decrease of the shear contact modulus. Precisely, prior to the failure, we do observe a decrease of the interfacial stiffness uh, 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 at this level, okay? But uh, we can also just state at the angle below the sliding, for example, here we just state uh, somewhere, for example, in the, in the 20 degree, so 20 degrees are far from the sliding angle for this uh, adhesive the film here, and then we increase the oscillation of the, this shear resonator uh, to about uh, 10 nanometers, so it's uh, still very small. So this small uh, oscillation is enough to trigger uh, this slide. Just remind you from a 20 degree, at a 20 degree, uh, the sliding angle is about 15 degree lower when the, we can trigger this uh, sliding. Okay. Uh, as uh, I, I mentioned, the, the ultras ultrasonic frequency is uh, so high here because of the initial effect. We can not uh, produce any motion of the, of the slider. So in that sense, it's a little bit different to the Bonberger uh, Gaudi's uh, experiments. Here, they, they are, this is a mechanical vibration. So the vibration play a rule, just the increase the shear, uh, uh, shear force. The frequency here is about uh, 100 Hertz. But in all our experiments, I, uh, I mentioned here, we have five megahertz. So the frequency is uh, so high. And in, in addition, uh, this uh, triggering of, uh, of the sliding is independent of the direction of the polarization of the vibration. We can vibrate our system in this direction, I mean, parallel to the sliding plan, but we can also do that in a, in a horizontal plan. But we still can trigger this kind of flying, uh, sliding. So the explanation of this uh, ultrasonic triggering of the sliding could, should be explained by a kind of uh, the nubrication, uh, the ultrasonic nubrication of the contact, okay? So it is a kind of a herzing contact. You know, uh, the, uh, the, the threshold of force, okay, of the sliding is dependent on, of course, the sheer, um, uh, uh, sheer stress of the materials, of, the, of this contact and materials, but also the rear area of the contact, what we call the, the herzing contact, and it's uh, stuck a contact. But according to the meaning law, when this contact is sheared by, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, it's sheared by the vibration, we will have uh, by the microslip micro at the edge of the contact, you may reduce this rear area of the contact. So you will reduce the area of the contact. In that, uh, uh, in that way, you will reduce this uh, force of the uh, yeah, of the uh, threshold. That's why we may uh, reduce this apparent. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, this uh, threshold uh, force and the apparent coefficient uh, of the friction, the static one. So yeah, can I want. To, uh, can I ask one quick question? Please. So the uh, the contact for carboxyl is uh, giving you friction that's bigger than one, right? Two. So you think that's hydrogen bonding? It's a bonding? Um, yeah, for the COOH, you okay. get a, a static coefficient that's bigger than one. So you think that's hydrogen bonding? Yes. Uh, it, it, yeah, so it is because of one, sorry. Uh, because, uh, yeah, 
it is a, 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 it's a, it's a kind of a, a defensive meal. You are, you are completely right. So it it is bonding. It is a, a, it's a slight bonding here. So uh, I I I should be careful here. So when I uh, explain uh, what is the happening here, I'm talking about the reduction of the area of, uh, of the contact. If the medium, I mean, if the contact is uh, is not uh, uh, is not, I'm sorry, is not uh, adhesive, so I can explain it as a uh, as a decrease of the uh, the decrease of the hurting contact. I will see. Okay, my hurting contact at this age, I will have the sleeping. Okay, so this is the explanation I will suggest for uh, no. I mean, so for uh, uh, weekly adhesive uh, uh, contact. But uh, in the case of this uh, COO2, as a matter of the, uh, the fact that you will have a kind of, uh, a kind of uh, uh, the fracture. So I say you have the micro sleep. This is a way to sing for the mentally sleeping, but you may also say the vibration will introduce some we call fissure propagation, the cracks, the micro cracks at, at the edge. I'm clear? I answer your question? No? Yeah, I think Heinrich is muted. Yeah, I, I think. Oh yeah, okay. yeah, you did. So <laughs> it was, was just thinking that because you have, you have uh, COOH and you got probably is in, in um, ambient conditions, you have a monolayer of water in there, so you probably have hydrogen bonding involved in there, which you wouldn't have for the CH3, right? And that yeah. gives you a slightly sticky interaction. Yes, yes, yes. I, yeah, I completely agree. So, uh, I mean, the sheer acoustic vibration could uh, reduce this area of the, con uh, area of the contact. In the case of the, uh, the, uh, the in the case of a no adhesive system, its area is governed by the hurting the contact, but in the adhesive system, it's just by the adhesion. Okay, so I will just want to, to mention that the, the vibration of amplitudes here, we will suggest as a kind of a temperature. You know why? Because it is independent of the direction of the vibration is parallel to the sliding surface or the parallel one, it will be the same thing here. So in that sense that uh, we will suggest this a uh, kind of uh, uh, effective temperature. It's important uh, to mention that this vibration and uh, is this shear vibration induced the, the failure uh, uh, in, in the sense of the uh, sleeping is much more uh, efficient. It's much more efficient than uh, a failure. For example, you will do it by by the opening. We can compare uh, the jump, uh, for example, just by a jump at the surface uh, from uh, one asperity to the other. If you compare that, you will see that it's a true order of magnitude uh, uh, small. So the message is that. Um, the, the, the sheer, uh, yeah, the, the sheer failure of the sliding triggered by the horizontal vibration is much more efficient than by, uh, for the model one. In other words, the failure by the model two is always more easy by the failure created by the model one, yeah, the opening. So very quickly, I want to, now just in five minutes, I will try to show our last experiments uh, we uh, move uh, forward, try to trigger uh, this uh, sliding now uh, uh, on the granular layer. So more precisely, we will put a granulator on an inclined plane uh, uh, where we measure, for example, the, the angle of the avalanche, which is about 20 degrees here. We put our system at an angle few degree uh, uh, lower than this avalanche uh, uh, angle. Uh, as soon as we uh, 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 we apply 
the this ultrasonic vibration is a very high frequency. Okay, it's about 100 kilohertz, and with the uh, MTU just a few nanometers, we do trigger this uh, this uh, uh, granular flow here. As I mentioned, that the amplitude and the frequency of the, uh, the amplitude is so small, the frequency is so high, so we cannot make any change, um, uh, produce any uh, rearrangement of the particles. So our understanding is uh, the reduction of the interparticle uh, friction coefficient, as I mentioned before, okay, by our uh, previous experiments. So this, uh, this mechanism could explain that even we put over uh, uh, the inclined angle below this, uh, uh, the avalanche uh, angle here, for example, to 18 degree, for example, the, the, uh, the ultrasonic vibration reduces this uh, coefficient and uh, put the system, drag the system at these uh, red curves. In that case, we can go on the other side. In other words, we trigger this, uh, the, uh, this flow here. But it's very important to mention that we observed the two regime uh, for the avalanche triggering. One is that if this inclined angle is just about, for example, two degrees below in the, in the 18, we find that the ultrasound uh, uh, triggered the, the granular flow, flow ve uh, velocity is very close to this one. I mean, the, the initial fast flow, which is independent of the ultrasound uh, amplitude. However, if the angle is here, it's about uh, five degrees lower. I mean, in that case, this granular flow velocity depend on, depend on the ultrasound amplitude and could stop, stop the flow if we turn off the ultrasound vibration. So uh, this behavior uh, pointed to, uh, 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 point to uh, purification behavior analog to the, the jammed creep and the, the sliding I showed you before uh, for the solid friction uh, system. So, uh, Let's try to understand what he, uh, uh, to quantify better this ultrasound, uh, uh, ultrasound uh, tri uh, triggering of a granular flow for this uh, two regime, which is uh, you can imagine very uh, well, universal on many frictional velocity weakening system such as a solid uh, uh, solid friction, but also in the granular system. Okay. We always have this kind of what we call the velocity weakening of the friction. So you have a metastable zoom here, especially here, which is between what we call the angle of avalanche. So it's the maximum one, but also the angle of the repose. With the, the language of solid friction, it is between the static friction and the, the dynamic uh, friction uh, coefficient, okay? So we can investigate uh, for these two cases. Now, if you, the, your imposed angle, I mean, your, uh, I mean the, the angle of the inclination is uh, below the, the avalanche angle. In other words, the imposed shear is below the threshold. Okay, in this case, but uh, it is uh, superior to the angle of the repose here from the motion, uh, from the, the motion equation here. Okay, if we suppose that the application of the ultrasound will induce, for example, more than about 30% of the decrease of the coefficient of the friction between the solid particles. In that case, we will trigger a flow, a stable flow, is an inimitable flow, is an initial flow. Okay, so it uh, it will inimitable self accelerated. However, if uh, the, 
the inclusion angle is below the, the angle of the repose. In that case, uh, the ultrasound uh, uh, induced the, the new lubrication will just uh, uh, create a flow which is stopped later at a long time. So in other words, because, uh, uh, because your angle is, uh, is a smaller, if you turn off, for example, your vibration, your curves, uh, the red one will come back to your blue one. So your mu two here is below, uh, below the angle of the repose. In that case, it's impossible. The state, I mean, the, uh, the stable state will be, will be, uh, I mean, just the, uh, the jammed uh, solid state. In that sense, that the flow will, will stop here. Okay, so, mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, uh, I hope it's clear. So I'm sorry, I'm a little bit long. So in summary, uh, I will say, the ball thinking experiments uh, combined by uh, ultrason uh, ultrasonic triggering provide a very useful local rheological measurements in a 3D opaque granular uh, sediments. And uh, the vibration induce the fluidization in the engine of the system can occur without causing the visible motion of the particles. In other words, the packing density change via a sheer acoustic lubrication of the, uh, of the contact, which lead to, of course, the shear modules are sifting, but also the year stress uh, decrease. So uh, this is a kind of a new mechanism of the quick sense. Uh, I want to insist on the dense granular sediments compared to the classic uh, mechanism of the quick, quick sense or the liquefaction frequently associated to the loose the granular soils, the shaking uh, will compact the medium, which increase the pore pressure, and uh, of course uh, uh, produce a, a, a loss of the mechanical resistance. But in over system, the granular uh, uh, sediments is already dense at, at the beginning. And uh, also this mechanism of the of the, uh, the softening also could trigger the shear instability, such, a, such as uh, of the sliding or the granular avalanche, even by a very small amplitude of the ultrasound. So uh, such a picture, such a scenario, uh, we think do uh, provide a, a better understanding of the landslides or the rock falls uh, triggered by the seismicity, as we observed sometimes here, near a volcano uh, in which, so is, this is a volcano at the Piton, the La Fournaise in the La Réunion, uh, French La Réunion Iceland, where we observed the important landslides every day. And uh, this uh, occurrence uh, uh, probably due to the local seismicity. So thank you for your attention. Um, I'm sorry for my, again, for my uh, broken English. So thank you very much. Good. Thank you. It's a fantastic talk. <clears throat> Shopping. Heinrich, uh, Heinrich had a class, so he had to leave like about four or five minutes ago. And he wanted me to tell you that he really enjoyed your talk. So, uh, we are now open to questions, so please feel free to unmute yourself and ask questions. Okay, I have a question uh, since uh, no questions are up yet. Um, so I have a relatively silly question, actually. So, so it, it, when the ball sinks, it's like a Brazil nut type problem in some sense, right? Uh, the question I have concerns what kind of upward flow patterns emerge of the grains as the heavy ball sinks. It, 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 is there a way 
in which you can extract information about that? Uh, here? Uh, so, uh, so you sh when you were discussing the sinking ball problem, the first yeah. one, so, the, so as the ball is sinking, right, I, I would imagine you, you have grain flow upward from the smaller grains from the bottom should move up to create the space, right? So, so what I'm wondering about is whether you can extract that kind of motion information in any way from your experiments. Uh, well, uh, the question, if I understand it correctly, uh, yes, we do observe uh, uh, with a better uh, investigation of the ultrasonic uh, of the ultrasonic uh, uh, waves here that around this uh, around this uh, sinking ball, mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, there's some motion here. Okay, uh, there are uh, really motion associated. I mean, around this uh, sinking ball. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, at the moment, because we don't have a, a really, well, uh, in other words, uh, we, we don't investigate in details this uh, flowing field uh, around the sinking ball. But uh, uh, we may do some investigation, just like uh, the, a, a kind of a classic experiments of the sinking ball inside a bin hand plastic fluid. Yeah, mm -hmm. many years ago, people uh, have in, in invested in such a such kind of uh, a classic uh, uh, geometric, uh, uh, a kind of a geometric configuration, a la stocks, just like the, the singing ball. Uh, mm -hmm. In discussion with uh, Joe Coda from the University of uh, San, uh, San Diego, he told us that, uh, well, uh, we may. Yeah, there, there are a very uh, complicated motion associated with uh, the ball sinking in, uh, in the, the behind the plastic of uh, the, uh, the fluids. And uh, probably we may deduce some information there, but uh, which uh, uh, to do so, we, we should have a more complex model. I mean, uh, kind of uh, uh, the model. Uh, yeah, to compare for the motion, which could be detected by the ultrasonic uh, uh, scattered waves. So at the moment, uh, we not yet go further. Uh, Joe Coda told us that uh, it could be uh, a good way to investigate more carefully by comparing by all this uh, previous work in the literature uh, with the Bingham fluid, I mean, the ball sinking in the Bingham Free. Yeah, thanks. That, 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 it's a rich problem because, you know, some years ago we investigated the crater problem basically by, by having balls come down on, on a granular surface and enter yeah. at various velocities. And we were able to see the crater edge formation. And uh, so I was, I mean, we were able to calculate many things at the time. And I thought it, it had some very exciting physics in it, not necessarily very difficult. One could make nice friction models. Um, and it's difficult, but one can make nice friction models. But so I was thinking that maybe uh, with ultrasonic scattering, you can actually get into fast penetrating balls also, which hasn't been looked at. People have looked at very slow penetrating balls like Doug Durian did, but not fast ones. And, and we also couldn't do fast ones. Yeah, uh, I do believe it's a very important stuff. You, 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 uh, many studies about the uh, the impact in the grand system, many works in, in that field. From experimental viewpoint, as you know, um, the, the most of the experiments uh, uh, conducted in, the, in a 2D system, okay? You, you may visualize all this, but in the real life, as you know, it's a, a 3D, so it's very hard to follow that. And you may have the impact, uh, the observation at, at the surface, but inside, the system in the in the what we call the granular sediment, the ocean uh, sediments, is very important to see what yeah. is the penetration inside this kind of system. So the ultrasound sonar, I mean the acoustic sonar, 
is a very good method to employ this kind of thinking in the um, in the ocean uh, sediments. So it's mm -hmm. a, I think uh, many applications could be done in that uh, in in that uh, fields. But you are right. Uh, the granular sediments, the, it is uh, the friction is a very important one. So we should uh, take into account uh, the recent uh, development in these fields, including mm -hmm. in the granular system saturated by the water. So the friction is not a, a simple suspension. The rheologic people now understand that the friction is very important for this kind of uh, uh, what we call the suspension. So all of uh, uh, achievement from the granular uh, community is, is very, I mean, it's very uh, helpful for the people in that field. So yeah. we started to, to make some connection uh, between the two fields. And I do believe this uh, uh, ultrasonic uh, sauna or probing is very useful for the fundamental level, mm -hmm. but it's also uh, important from the application because we can apply to that in the yeah. real situation. It's a yeah. acoustic sauna, you, you know, we, we can probe um, the bottom of the ocean and the ocean uh, sediments, but also mm -hmm. for the granular system. Yeah, it's, a, it's amazingly powerful. I'm asking all the questions. Any other questions? I'm, I'm happy to see Thorsten here. Uh, Thorsten had shown up. He was he was here for a while. I don't know if he's still here. Okay, nobody's asking questions. Um, all right, I have I have a lot of questions, but I, I'll I'll send them to you by email, and we can we can have a chat, uh, and I'll be posting the lecture uh, later today. So thank you so much, Xiaoping. It's a, it's a very, very nice. Uh, but and, thank uh, you, and just thank you, all of you, to, to be here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. you have a great, great weekend. Okay. All okay. Right. Have so a great day. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.